I call the member for Moncrief. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm always pleased to rise after I've been forced to listen to diatribe from members opposite about how the Labor Party has some kind of moral monopoly on the working class people of Australia. How it's the Labor Party that, for some unknown reason, well, I should say, for some reason only known to members of the Labor Party, uh, seems to be the only people in this chamber that are concerned with. Uh, the lifestyles and the costs of living for Australia's working families. But a little secret for the Australian Labor Party. It's not about the rhetoric. It's not about the glossy language. It's not about the glossy brochures. It's not about whether or not Kevin Rudd's photo is big this week and Julia's photo is small, or whether it's in fact Julia's photo big this week and Kevin's photo that's small. What actually matters to those people out there who employ us to make a difference in their lives is what you deliver. It's results that count. It's the difference that you make in their lives that matters to them. And what they know about the Australian Labor Party is that they are complete and utter frauds. And they're frauds, Mr. Speaker, on any measure that you're prepared to use, on any measure that you're prepared to benchmark government performance on. The Australian Labor Party is a fraud because their rhetoric doesn't match the results. And what we know, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that the Australian Labor Party likes to talk about working families. Who could forget the election of the Rudd Labor government back in 2007? Now, granted, there are many who would like to on that side, but that notwithstanding, who could forget it when we saw Kevin Rudd earnestly looking down the barrel of TV cameras across the land saying, I'm here for Australia's working families. And they believed him in large measure, Mr Deputy Speaker. That's why he was elected. But what we know, though, what we know, though Mr Deputy Speaker, is that promises that he would be just like John Howard but with a softer heart, promises that he was an economic conservative, were nothing. They meant nothing and they were followed through with nothing. Because when you look at Labor's performance in office, it's been abysmal. They've taken Australia from a $70 billion surplus position, from budget surpluses in virtually every single year of the Howard government, to now being $132 billion in debt. Now, Labor members like to say, oh, but you're misguiding the Australian people because you don't take into account that we've had the GFC. You don't take into account that we've been so adversely affected. Well, the reality, though, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that simply doesn't accord with the truth. Because, in fact, the Asian region has been through much greater economic tumult than the GFC. It was called the Asian financial crisis and affected our area of the world much more than the GFC ever did, and Dr Emerson, an economist who sits at the table, has suddenly gone silent because he knows the truth. And he knows that under Peter Costello, his economic stewardship of the Australian economy ensured that despite those economic headwinds, despite that severe economic turbulence, the coalition was able to make strong, effective decisions that led Australia to the lowest unemployment rate in 33 years, that delivered a $70 billion surplus and ensured that we had productivity growth that leaves Labor's record for shame. And what's more, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have heard Labor Party promises from mountain to seaside all over the country about how the Labor Party cons is concerned about Australian workers. And you know, you think back to 2007 and how Labor was going to make a difference to Australian families. And of course, there is one truly important measure on that, and that's what's happening to grocery prices. What's happening with people's budgets and the, what, and the food that they can actually put on their tables? Now, we'd recall, of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, that at that time, the Labor Party promised this U Butte initiative, this new policy pronouncement uh, called Grocery Watch. Now, we all know that Labor walked away from Grocery Watch, and it's very unfortunate for the minister at the table, very unfortunate that the minister at the table is the person sitting there. Because what we know, and I did a little Google on the words Grocery Watch, and it's interesting because the first result that comes up under Grocery Watch is grocerywatch.com.au. And it says, hello world, welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. And this was a $13 million initiative by the Australian Labor Party, $13 million that the Australian Labor Party tipped down the drain. And all you've got is a WordPress site that says, this is your, third, your first post. The fourth result, though, is much more interesting. The fourth result is an article that ran in The Age by Kelly Burke on the 27th of June, 2009. And this is quite telling, Mr Deputy Speaker. 
says the Minister for Competition Policy and Consumer Affairs, Dr Craig Emerson, uh, made the decision to scrap the grocery price monitoring website, $13 million of taxpayers' money, just six days before its scheduled launch. <laughs> and it went on, though, because it said, and I quote from the article, the federal government's $13 million election promise to force grocery prices down lies in tatters. And I thought, how apt? Because it's not just Grocery Watch that you could apply that sentence to. There's so many from this Labor Party. You could say the federal government's uh, election promise to introduce Fuel Watch lies in tatters. The federal government's election promise to install pink bats lies in tatters. The federal government's decision to remove pink bats lies in tatters. The federal government's election promise to build school halls lies in tatters. The federal government's election promise to deliver a surplus lies in tatters. The federal government's decision to uh, election promise to keep interest rates down lies in tatters. And the federal government's election promise to introduce mandatory pre-commitment lies in tatters. But of course, the most important of all election promises, Mr Deputy Speaker, the federal government's election promise not to introduce a carbon tax lies in tatters. On every single measure, this is a government that has betrayed the working people of Australia. Unemployment is up under your government. Debt is up under your government. And the holy grail that the Labor Party likes to focus on, that is of interest rates, well, let's look at some facts on interest rates. Because although the Labor Party is very fond of claiming that interest rates are lower under them, we know in reality that interest rates are actually lower under the coalition. We also know that inflation is lower under the coalition. And the reason these things happen, Mr Deputy Speaker, is because under the coalition we control spending. We don't go on $136 billion spending sprees. We actually make meaningful, considered decisions that deliver solid stewardship when it comes to the Australian economy and deliver results in terms of productivity, in terms of inflation, in terms of interest rates. Oh, and I hear members opposite talking about productivity now, saying the worst productivity. Well, fascinating. Average annual productivity growth under the coalition government from 19, uh, 1996 to 2007, 1.2% productivity growth. And under the Labor Party, the same um, uh, corresponding period for Labor in government, uh, minus 0.9 per cent. Minus 0.9 per cent. Average annual Labor productivity growth under the coalition government from 96 until 2007, 2.2 per cent. Average annual Labor productivity growth under the Labor Party, 0.9 per cent for the corresponding period that Labor's in office. So once again, we see the facts simply unmask the truth about how this government is completely inept when it comes to economic stewardship. But my concern, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that real Australian families out there who are trying to put food on the table, trying to service their mortgage, trying to meet all the expenses associated with raising kids in Australia today, have been left worse off as a result of this government's policies. We know that inflation is increasing at what seems to many families to be an exponential rate. Electricity prices since 2007 are up 51 per cent. Gas prices since that period are up 30 per cent. Water and sewage rates up 46 per cent. Health costs up 20 per cent. Education costs up 24 per cent. And rents on average are up 20 per cent. And it's going to get worse. When Labor introduces the world's biggest carbon tax midway through this year, we'll see that in the first year alone, Expectations are that electricity prices will go up by a further 10 per cent. In the first year alone, 9 per cent expected to be the increase in gas bills. And of course, on Labor's own figures, families will have to fork out an extra $515 a year under the carbon tax, and that's before any of the hidden costs start to wash through the economy. We also know that Labor's attacking other parts of Australia's um, uh, population's costs of living. Private health insurance. Labor, of course, promised not to do anything when it came to private health insurance. Now they're attacking that large proportion of the population that relies on the 30 per cent rebate to ensure that private medical cover is affordable for them and their family. On childcare, we've seen prices of childcare escalate as a direct consequence of Labor's policy decisions, up by, it's estimated, $80 a week as a consequence of Labor's decision. On every single measure, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a government that's big on one thing and one thing only. It's big on talk. But when it comes to real action, when it comes to real results, when it comes to providing hope, reward and opportunity for Australia's working families, this government, own, uh, this government delivers nothing. 
It delivers higher unemployment. It delivers lower real wages. It delivers higher inflation, higher interest rates, and it's Australian working families that have suffered as a direct consequence of this Labor Order. Party being in government. Moncrief, time has expired.